Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I am Siddharth Zarabi and you are watching Easynomics. On the show today, we are joined by a very prominent member of India's industrial strength, R. Dinesh, the President of the Confederation of Indian Industry, who is the Chairman of one of the largest companies in its space, TVS Supply Chain Solutions. Uh, Mr. Dinesh, welcome to Business Today Television. Thank you very much for your time with us today. I want to begin by uh, asking you to give us a sense of the mood in corporate India at this point of time. We are a few weeks away from the result of the general election. It's the beginning of the financial year. The previous financial year has been very good, but there are also some shadows in what is otherwise a pretty rosy outlook as far as business is concerned. What is your assessment of the situation on the ground? Thank you, Siddharth, and nice to be back here again with you. So, on the ground, actually, if you look at from the industry perspective, I think there is a high degree of optimism uh, looking at the future. And as all of us know, while there have been many geopolitical uncertainties and issues which we all face and some which are actually not easy for us to uh, predict or forecast. But I think the good news is that I think the kind of base which India has today, both uh, from the attraction or attractiveness of a domestic market and the opportunity we have created of being a cost competitive country makes us look at this from a high degree of optimism. If you look at the CII business survey which we do every quarter, actually the feedback we have got is that uh, compared with say H1 of FY23, we, more than 60% of our respondents are looking at a more positive outlook for H1 of FY25, sorry, FY24 to FY25. So, if you uh, overlay these two uh, data points, so to say, I think there is uh, significant uh, optimism in terms of how the future of India's growth is going to be. And from CIS perspective, we are looking at an, in, an excess of 7.5% rate of growth for FY25 as well. So, all of these are, I would call it the good news on the horizon, in spite of the fact that we do have uh, the geopolitical uncertainties and to a certain extent, the fact that while uh, inflation globally and in India seems to have been well controlled, we need to watch out for any other situations which may arise to uh, change that circumstances. One of the key things of the post-COVID economic recovery in India has been uh, a K-shaped recovery. Certain sectors have done well, certain sectors have underperformed and certain sectors under uh, the uh, pressure of what is happening externally, including IT, are now seeing signs of weakness. If you look at it on a sectoral basis, uh, what is your own assessment? Uh, is IT going, the IT sector, which is one of the largest employers in India and brings in so much foreign exchange, uh, do you see um, uh, you know, a recovery in a few quarters, uh, given that we are at the beginning of the financial year. Uh, the same question also for the startup sector, which saw a funding winter of sorts in the recent past. Yeah, they are, I mean, obviously very good data points for us to uh, look at. So, if I look at the survey and if you look at the services sector, I think again, there is a cautious optimism across the board. You are right. I think the global markets still are not come to the recovery levels which we would expect. But having said that, I think the US has been holding up quite well. And of course, we have to watch out for the US elections as to what is going to happen from the whether it has any effect on the economic perspective there. But uh, Europe and uh, UK, which uh, have been, I would call it in uh, very uh, low rates of growth or to a certain extent even uh, a small recession, officially I think it looks that it will take at least 2-3 quarters more before they come back. But having said that, I think as service sector and as new uh, opportunities emerge in those areas as well. So, if I look at say the emergence of artificial intelligence, emergence and use of how data is being utilized, etc. I think our survey seems to show and I do not have specific data for IT sector, but if you look at services as a sector, I think there is cautious optimism there as well. On the startup side, I think uh, it is good news and I would call it, uh, as, I would not want to call it as bad news, but the awareness has just been created thanks to the funding winter 
has made sure that people are really focusing on profitable growth. And therefore, I believe the opportunity which India has in terms of further growth opportunities from the startup perspective will mean and has already we are already seeing green shoots of it of funding coming in more, especially to support companies which have got unique and differentiated know-how and an ability to solve problems at a scale which India is really looking for. So again, uh, there are, I would call it, uh, issues which we will need to watch out for and be ready and be prepared, including geopolitical and economic issues which some of the developed world is continuing to face. But at the same time, considering India, the opportunities which we have, and I would call it the competitive base we have built for ourselves. I do believe that uh, even the service sector and startups will st uh, start flourishing or start seeing better opportunities uh, going forward. One of the other defining features of the post-COVID recovery, and in fact before that, but clearly and starkly post-COVID has been the government pump priving uh, the economy through a sustained capex investment program. Beyond the numbers really, one of the key things that has been spoken about continuously pretty much for the last two, two and a half, three years is the lack of private sector investment. Today, at the beginning of uh, another fiscal, do you think uh, that Indian industry, private sector uh, companies are now going to open their purse strings on investing? Or do you feel the tepidness that we have seen in this regard is likely to continue for some more time? Uh, again, so let me step back and look at it from the percentage of capex spend which the private sector has been doing. So if you look at uh, the data points which we have is 21, 22, 22, 23, and I'm assuming 24 will also look somewhat similar. We are speaking about uh, the private capex covering somewhere between 36 to 37 percent from the actual expenditure uh, on their side. And I believe that that number will continue. So I think it's important for us to understand that private capex is happening. Maybe we are not seeing the same rate of growth of private capex as may have been the case uh, from the public infrastructure spend which the government has been doing. So uh, the way I would look at it is, let us look at the two data parameters. I think this is not new, I have shared with this earlier, but every quarter it is actually increasing the capacity utilization. So, so some sectors, cement, steel, automobile, CVs, etc., are all now speaking about excess cap I mean capacity which is equivalent to anywhere upwards of 90% utilization. Most other sectors have, are speaking about 75% utilization. So if I overlay the fact that we have very strong balance sheets, we have resilient uh, or we have shown the resilience as companies to wade through all the geopolitical issues which we face in the recent past, come out of COVID successfully, manage the inflation well. I strongly believe that uh, there is uh, further impetus rather than lesser impetus in terms of the focus on private capex. And the last element I will mention is in our survey we had asked, uh, you know, from the members, from our members on how they are looking at capex spends uh, in H1 and H2. So if I again compare that, I think more uh, between 40 to 60 percent of the people are speaking about H1 of uh, FY25 as being higher than what is going to be for uh, what has been in the past. Therefore, uh, I would call it that uh, the uh, capex spend is already, everybody is pregnant with it and it's a question of a matter of time when the actual delivery starts taking place. What about uh, profitability? Uh, one of the features that we saw uh, has been enhanced profitability in many sectors as companies kind of more efficiently and better utilize their existing assets. And we are also seeing that bullishness uh, percolate into the stock market, which uh, has been on its own journey. And with the most recent data, we have seen the Sensex at 75,000, 4 lakh uh, crore uh, market capitalization. Uh, um, also uh, being exceeded. So, uh, what do you see in terms of the capability of uh, India Inc. as far as their ability to continue to improve margins is concerned? So, if I again step back and look at it from a macro angle, I think India's focus or the government's focus has been on 
making sure that the cost of doing business comes down and that extends to supply chain costs, that extends to the way in which the digital infrastructure is being used to further make Indian businesses more competitive or cost uh, or reduce costs from a uh, way of doing business is concerned. So, if I overlay that aspect, I do believe that the companies have genuinely focused on increasing productivity and uh, with the cost of business coming down, I think it is a significant opportunity for companies to actually spend money for the future, which is you know in a way the capex requirement which we are speaking of. So, while I cannot comment for specific sectors or specific companies, on the whole I believe Indian businesses are uh, well positioned to uh, not just increase profits, but invest for the future using those uh, using that uh, favorable uh, tailwind which we are having today. Mr. Dinesh, one of the other defining features uh, over the past five years and especially after the central government gave a big tax uh, cut for companies is uh, various schemes to boost manufacturing including the PLI scheme. My question is that once the new government uh, comes in, what do you think needs to be done to further uh, enhance the PLI program to ensure that uh, more results can be seen on the ground? So, I think the uh, if you look at first again fundamental, fundamental is that the cost of doing business has been focused on, it is coming down, the ease of doing focus is continuing and that must continue even further. Fundamentally, if you look at it, I think from CII side, we have been talking about uh, a little bit of a big ticket structural reforms. So, that I think cuts across commonly. So, that could include the land and the labor reform and these directly play uh, into further enhancing the viability and the attractiveness of the PLI scheme. Rather than tinker with the PLI scheme because I think the PLI scheme is just I would call it like the icing on the cake. People like the overall plate, but then once they see it, it is even more attractive to come in and invest. And if you look at sectors like semiconductor, etc., there are other support schemes which is part of the PLI which is being laid out. But from CII side, we are also recommending something beyond that, which is to say, can we look at an employment linked incentive plan? And that really cuts across sectors where there is a huge opportunity for employment generation. So, logistics is a sector, tourism is a sector, healthcare, and also. Uh, I would call it hospitality. So, all of these are sectors which can further generate employment. So, from a manufacturing perspective, it people are coming in for the domestic demand, people are looking coming in and finding India cost competitive and ease of doing business in India and therefore, PLI becomes more attractive and for us, I think it is not a question of tinkering with the scheme, but enhancing the scope of it by focusing on uh, better implementation of it uh, through the structural reforms which I spoke about. And finally, and that and sorry and I think the more important point I would like to add there is that not just is at the center because I think the center has done many of those things, but making sure that we build consensus at the state levels itself. And to do that, I think one of our recommendations was to have like the GST council, a structure where people can get together from the center and the states, agree on the way in which the land and labor reforms will be implemented. And that then speed ups the process of uh, not just the PLI, but making even more, uh, I would call it attractive destination for India to uh, get faster growth. By all accounts, uh, companies as well as the markets expect continuity in government. And therefore, uh, my next question relates to what you think should be uh, priority items for the government once it uh, assumes power again in terms of pushing our growth as well as ensuring that a productivity gets enhanced across the board. Yeah, that is obviously I think a very, very important agenda item for CIA as well. So, first and foremost we want to, uh, first and foremost we want the growth to continue and the growth to be inclusive. So, if I ally, ally that or as, have that as the base, then like I mentioned the, st the structural big ticket reforms, the land, labor, supporting the agriculture sector making sure the changes are implemented across India, across the states through the mechanism I spoke about becomes a first important point. The second from an inclusive, from a business side of the inclusivity if I can use that word would be the focus on the MSMEs. So, if you look at the ECGLS scheme which had been done by the government, a very good scheme, but can we actually extend this further to say that there will be a 
mechanism of rating itself, which may be different from a normal rating mechanism, which is used for very large corporates, but used in nice a nice manner to support the MSMEs. And we create a corpus fund, which will protect or which will give the ECGLS equivalent for supporting the MSME sector. And that's not all. I think the MSME sector has to spend uh, time, effort and money in terms of resources in terms of the green transition. So can we also have, and we are not speaking about very big, large amounts of money here, a large amount of corpus here, but it could be, you know, somewhere between 500 to 1000 crores, which will enable their green transition journey to be supported. Finally, uh, MSMEs also struggle with the fact that they have to uh, move into the new digital transition era. And this transition can also be supported uh, through a mechanism of a, a fund or a funding mechanism which supports the expenditure which the MSMEs will have to look at. So that is what I would call as a support for the MSME sector. The third big step is I would call it the focus in or a continued focus on spend on education and healthcare that cuts across all sectors of society that supports the growth of everyone here. And last but not the least inclusivity in terms of getting uh, the women more employable and more employed. So the skilling approach and maybe actually enabling the building of uh, uh, more skilled uh, applicability for the new age uh, technologies which are coming, whether it be AI or any of the other application uses of uh, technology in a better manner. So these are what I would call uh, is a general wish list which we would have from any government which comes to power. And like I said, making it implementable in a time-bound action manner is what we will be happy to support and work with. Um, since it's election season, uh, we are seeing manifestos and some of them are promising the moon when it comes to freebies. And there are also other elements including uh, reservation, for example, in the private sector that seems to be uh, drawing up its head again, among other things. Do members of uh, your guild um, have any concerns around uh, that and uh, has CII taken any position in this regard? No, as I said, I think CII has outlined its ask or so to say expectations from uh, the government of the uh, future and I think that's how uh, we would like to look at it rather than, you know, comment on any specific issues which uh, uh, manifesto of a party may say. For us, I think it's important that there is this focus of uh, focus on inclusive growth and obviously making sure that we can grow uh, uh, not uh, at the same, I mean, as much as we have grown in the past and maybe even higher because of the fact that we have had significant infrastructure spend both physical and digital. So for us, uh, it is not a matter of concern. I think it's a matter of making sure that we work with the governments to make that happen in reality. Electoral bonds have been uh, uh, struck down. Uh, and for companies across the board in India, the big question is that if they choose to participate in uh, electoral funding, nothing wrong about that, how do they do it? Do you think a time will come where CII may uh, propose to the government any other alternative options when it comes to electoral finance and ensure that companies don't get vilified and uh, uh, a no adverse uh, sort of uh, effects come out of what has happened most recently? So, I mean, if you look a step back and look at it, I think CII stands for transparency in uh, funding and support to uh, political parties. And I think that's all that we look for from making sure that we can do it. We haven't yet thought through something to come up with as, a, you know, an alternate solution. But that's something down the road for us to look at because obviously this has happened very recently. And uh, for us, I think it's uh, it's important as an industry body to look at uh, supporting the in industry and not really looking at it as a good or bad from an approach to uh, the right method of political funding. My final question, and this has to do with uh, our inflation management strategy and the monetary response. Uh, Mr. Dinesh, uh, do you feel concerned that uh, we are now seeing data and reports, the fact that our banks are uh, seeing credit growth go far ahead of deposit growth. And um, uh, a cost of funding for companies also uh, could eventually also become an issue going forward. 
does this concern you and do you see the need for any changes as far as our monetary policy is concerned given the trends we are seeing in inflation? See, I think we should actually again look at it from the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue is are funds going to be available for growth? I think let us look at the various other aspects of it. The deepening of the bond markets, the sovereign rating of India, the acceptance or the positioning of India in the global stage, the ability for foreign investors to come in and support India's uh, Indian incorporated growth story, whether it be from bonds or whether it be from structured finance or whether it be uh, supporting the transition for sustainability, etc. are the issues which any developing country and developed country, developed countries face today. So, I think it will be wrong to pick up only one element of it, which is, you know, the deposit growth, because on the other side, if you look at the rest of the world, there is a significant focus on consumption taking place and you don't want to, I mean, I'm not saying money put into banks is uh, not good, but as long as those monies are being used productively, whether it be in the stock markets or whether it be in uh, other good asset purchases, I think it is, uh, it augurs well as the country uh, aspires to become more developed and as it grows uh, faster and better. So, for us, I do not think right now there is any concern with regard to deposit growth resulting or knack of deposit growth resulting in uh, cost of funding going up. In fact, it should be the reverse because as I said, we have become now exposed to the global markets in bonds uh, and you know the actions which have been taken by SEBI and the rating agencies are also looking at India more favorably. So, I think that will actually help us more than anything else in reducing the cost of capital and access to funds will also become better. Absolutely. And uh, Mr. Dinesh, uh, uh, this is a task that will uh, continue in the quarters and years ahead. I thank you very much for your time with us today to discuss the state of the Indian economy and the mood in India Inc. Viewers, if you've been, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back with more. Until then, goodbye.